Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities and Miniatures. Today we got a new box from Creature Caster. And what is it? It is the QRN, which would be the Queen of Ruin. So this is their newest model. And I am going to attempt to go into this blind other than having looked at the website when I first purchased it. Okay, so we got a bag of goodies. A life counter with... Well, hey, that's kind of cool. There's actually some magnets included this time, so you actually don't have to... do that kind of work yourself. And there are already dials for the magnets to attach. That's a nice little touch. Thank you, guys. Cool thinking. And if you've been keeping track, just about every single one of their Kings and Queens models has included a life tracker dial, whatever sort you want, and it has both the regular face and the alternate head, and it counts from 1 to 10 or 1 to 20, and now has magnets. Quite cool. Right, what else we got? Another bag of stuff, which we'll look at. Some improbably long weapons. So this is like a pole that's going to have like a gibbet thing hanging off of it and various organs and fun stuff. Or a rather large blade with more blades attached and assorted viscera and body parts. Another baggie. And a big chunky base. About a hundred millimeter I'd say. Could be wrong. Feels like a hundred millimeter. Let's take a look in here. <laughs> Let's attempt to take a look in here. Let's cheat and take a look in here. I'm assuming this is the main body. And I am correct. Okay. So the main body consists of a giant tongue with a multitude of souls, people, thingies, skulls, what have you. I mean, I'm not kidding. This is really a very giant tongue. And then, surprisingly, a modestly covered main torso. I'm, I'm somewhat shocked <laughs> considering some of the other models I have built from Creature Caster. You can see here it's going to go somewhat like this spewing all that goodness out. Can't even keep her on camera. It's so big. Let's take a look at what's in the bags and hopefully not confuse it with all the other models and parts that I have laying on the table here with me. Okay, bone thingies, uh, okay, wings of some sort, a random devilish thing, I, I don't even know, okay, I, I really, I might need to go back and look at the website, maybe they already have a build guide up and I didn't even know, bells, okay, so if you're going for that nurgly look, uh, I think this is the upper teeth for the belly tongue and um, I don't know, tentacle thingies? It's just so much. Big curvy horns. And this is one thing I really like about the Creature Caster Ruin models are their horns. They're just like everywhere. And honestly, I've said it many times before, but I'm not the biggest Nurgle fan. I never was a fan of the, you know, distended bellies and pus and boils and crap like that. But I do love the crazy rampant mutations and just things going everywhere. You can see some more soul type people hanging out. A random cloth or loincloth or something. I'm assuming it was here maybe. More horns. More horns. A horn and maybe cap to a weapon? I don't know. I still don't know what those wings are for yet. Let's keep going. There's a lot more to it. Okay. 
another horn that fell off of something. More horns. Capped off horns. I think they're supposed to be like that. Kind of flat at the end. Looks like there's a, yeah, okay. I'm mumbling to myself here. The two heads. We have the multi-faced version. Skull and extra mounts. And we have the Righteous Knight one. I, I kind of think, and I'm going to go with this. I know it doesn't really match up with the King, but it's okay. Some weird something impaled there on the head. Another skeleton. I think there's going to be a lot of pinks and reds involved in painting this model. Slowly but surely, I have painted just about all of my creature caster models. Given enough time, they all will get painted. I have no idea what this is. <laughs> just like, I don't know. Hmm. Okay, it's got these two little spots. I'm assuming that, ah, it's for loincloth. Which looks like it used to be a standard or something. This is crazy. This thing's going to be huge. Not as crazy as some of the other kings and queen models that Creature Caster has done, but it's going to be big nevertheless. This must be one of the arms. I'm assuming that's going to be pulling back the belly. Another one of these gooey base guys. I don't know what color I'm going to do them. I like to do a lot of the more nurgly oozes and drippy stuff in very neon colors, so I don't know. Do I want to paint them like pot swalkers. Uh, another arm. This looks like the left hand. All knotted up. Spots for stuff. A foot. An armored foot at that. And here's the gibbet that's supposed to hang on the staff. Where is the staff in this pile? I don't know. There it is. So I think it's supposed to go like that. Thankfully, it's all one piece and everybody's just molded inside there trying to escape. That would have been a major irritation to have to pin all those bars into place. And I know I've done that on some model at some point somewhere, but thankfully not this one. Armor. Another cloven hooked leg. And stuff. I, I don't know. I just don't know. I think it's a shoulder. I'm going to go with a shoulder. Maybe like, nope. Nope. <laughs> well, maybe not. Maybe it's a leg. It could be like right there. And then the tongue is just going to cover all that like so. Blech. All right. Oh, my God. This is a serious pile of stuff here. It's not as bad as their crazy-looking queen of change or whatever. But... This is going to be a challenge nonetheless. So I'm going to start building, and I'm going to take at least all the major chunks of the body, and we'll go from there and slowly build it up. And we're going to try and see if I can do it without looking on the line. I don't know if that's possible. Anyway, wish me luck. Here we go. All right, and we got our lovely queen all finished up here. And believe it or not, outside of a couple little parts... I actually figured it all out entirely on my own. Now, there are quite a bit left over, and I do want to point out that I absolutely love this alternative head, and I, I'm going to have to find some sort of use for it. I want to put it on, like, on a slug body or something, but anyway. So I went with the more refined and dignified armored look here. I want to talk about a couple of things and just wanted to leave her as is for the moment just to show off a couple of things. First of all, she's actually not completely glued because that's just how I am and I want to be able to paint her in pieces because there's some spots that are going to be a little bit hard to get to. The sword at the moment is not actually attached just because it's going to be easier. It gets in the way there. Uh, pretty much everything else is actually glued on. So we'll take a look at the back here. You can see she's got all these crazy spikes, which I absolutely love. I actually did not glue the loincloth in just because, again, it kind of blocks off getting at all the soles or whatever spewing forth there. So it's pretty easy just to get in and out for the moment. But once the time is right, we will glue that sucker into place. The only thing I really had an issue with was figuring out where those bells went. And I'm still not 100% sold on that's actually where they go, but they seem to kind of 
find a nice little spot to lodge themselves. So everything there went okay. Her tongues, multiple little tongues here. Um, it probably could have actually been left unglued for the time being, but I just figured, what the hey, let's get it all on there. Um, otherwise, there is this little piece as well for the base. It's going to attach in the end. Everything lined up really nice and well. I did appreciate that there are some nice thick grooves for everything to attach to. Um, but since she's so large anyways, that doesn't seem like it's going to be much of an issue for her to actually stay stable on the base. As you can see, and like I said, I haven't really glued everything down yet. I don't think that's going to be much of an issue until it really matters at the very end there. And get her all sealed up. Okay. Uh, how big is she? Because that's probably the most important question. Well, we'll take our bog standard Space Marine there, just to give you a good size indication. And since I have one handy, although he does not have a base, and I really don't like showing off work in progress models, um, we'll grab our great unclean one too. Moving up in size, we have one of the, oh gosh, what were they called? I don't know. <laughs> this is another creature caster model. This is one of their smaller... Was it the Matriarchs? I don't think it, I know it's not a queen. Maybe it's the Matriarchs of Ecstasy. Something like that. She's on a 40 millimeter base. There were three of them, and sadly, she's the only one I painted so far. Uh, moving a step up, we've got the one and only creature caster orc Forge Lord, who is about 99% finished, but just to give you a good size indication of that as well. Because every time I do one of these creature caster videos, it's just a nice excuse to show off some of their models, and slowly but surely, I do try to pay my way through them all. The question probably most of you are asking, since this is most likely what she's going to be used as in a game, here we have my sadly unfinished, but someday finished, Great unclean one, Rodigus. So he is a little bit smaller. I guess if he was on a base, he'd sit a little bit taller. But still, she is bigger. He is wider. But he's still not going to be as big as this massive hunk of resin. Who, yes, I will honestly and truly get to someday in the future. God, I love this model. He, I just, that's that's the way a great unclean monstrosity should look. Yeah, he's kind of pathetic there next to him. But... Oh well. Okay, so moving through my assortment of creature caster demons. Let me, I'm just going to leave the sword right there. Good enough. Whatever. Whoa. Let's see, we've got our Lord of Malice here. Who well, honestly, I still think for my money, for the bang for your buck, I think he's probably one of the best of the creature caster models. I really like this model. And I believe this guy was the Lord of Plagues, who, despite being very hive tyrant like, is also still quite nergly and would love to hang out with the Queen of Ruin here. Um, let's grab one of the other queens, who someday I will get around to painting. She keeps getting closer and closer, and this is the Queen of Ecstasy, who is absolutely so gigantic, I can't even fit her on the screen. And we can have the Queen joined with somebody who is painted, the King of Ecstasy. And they are both quite the big and imposing models there. And finally, because I have him, and I am quite happy with how he turned out, we have the Dracon. Who is just a big, solid model. And sadly, you cannot see any of the shading detail in my videos that I did try to attempt on his lower legs. And all this comes off as very bright and primary color. But whatever, I did put the work in. You just can't notice it. Anyway, so I think our queen here is going to fit in quite nice with the other assorted models that Creature Caster has put out. She has a nice heft to her. She's got a nice presence. She's got that 100 millimeter base. And just like all the other creature caster models that are out there, she can have lots of little things swarming around her without any issues. It's not going to affect gameplay in any way, shape, or form. It's just overall very well designed, and I'm quite happy with the overall look and style of it. And it's going to be an interesting one to paint. Question is, is she going to actually get painted 
before the king. I don't know. I'm envisioning a very light grayish tan skin with maybe I'm thinking a purple wash and then go back and pick out all the fleshy tones and I don't know. There's this sphincter thing right here that I'm thinking needs to be pink. And I still haven't made up my mind what to do with all of those soul body things floating and crawling all over the place. If you guys have any suggestions, list them down below in the comment section. And if you are interested in checking out the queen here, I will have a link down below in the description as well that will take you to the Creature Caster website. Make sure you go to the right country of origin because that will help immensely with shipping. I know I'm in the U.S., and I had this model, I think, shipped out either the same day or the next day from when they were announcing it was going to be shipped. It came out really fast. Got it within a day, too. So, quite cool. Anyway, with that said, this is Ilord Tamberling with Obscurities and Miniatures. And thanks for watching. And hopefully you enjoyed. And we'll be back with more. See you later. Bye-bye.